loved her family, and she always kept close tabs on her daughters. She was so proud of the women they had become and of the families that they had started on their own. Although I'm not really sure it was the families she was so proud of, but the additional branches on the family trees that she got to add. All right, it was the families she really loved. <laughs> Her grandchildren were her raison d'etre, and they meant everything to her. She bragged about them constantly to anybody who would listen, or anybody who wasn't fast enough to get away. She talked about their academics, their athletics, their arts, all their passions. Most accounts were very accurate, some slightly off. And note for the record, Henry did not go to the World Championships for paddleboarding. <laughs> she couldn't get enough of her grandsons. All the sports, the basketball, baseball, golf, rowing. She was a real tomboy. She'd have catches with the boys, played horse on the basketball court, go down the slides with them, and of course, always swimming. She became a dominant avatar on all the boys' Xbox and Wii games. She, co she competed with the best of them. And then came Claire. A whole new type of grandchild. One she could sit with for hours and just talk, read to, have tea with, and of course discuss ballet without the fear of balls flying around. But in the end it didn't matter, grandson or granddaughter. It was about the quality time with the kids. Driving hours to see a game, to watch a play, last minute babysitting, no matter what she already had planned. That was Granny always there no matter what, with her bare essentials. Bottles of water, chips, American cheese, coffee, salt, and of course the camera. My kids and I figured out a while ago that the reason Granny loved to swim so much, especially in the ocean, was that she could keep her mouth open and get her daily intake of water and salt while at the same time <laughs> exercising. She was very efficient. And Pat enjoyed traveling with anyone she loved the big family trips with everybody and the small family trips with one or two of her children. It didn't matter where she went, as long as she had a family member to share it with and create lasting memories. Granny, we will all miss you. Your smile, your laugh, your conversation. We will miss all the history lessons and the geneal genealogical references. We will miss your zest and your spunk your optimism and support for everyone in the family, no matter what. I hope you find a beautiful ballroom wherever you are and a partner to dance with for a long time. Thank you for helping to make our lives more special. You will always be in our hearts. Now I'd like to call up Henry Fishman, Granny's son, and Pat's granddaughter to say his name. Um, so I'm going to read an essay I wrote for my college applications, actually, that was about Granny. Um, I sent it to her because she would wanted to read it, and she loved it so much that I thought I'd share it with everybody. Um, and after she read this one, she then wanted to read every single essay I had written and help <laughs> the It just shows how involved she was. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and my family and I are in the airport headed to Paris for a vacation. We were lugging suitcases to our terminal, half asleep, when Granny stops. I think this is a good time for a picture, everyone. Say cheese, she says as we half-heartedly look towards the old red camera in her hands. All I can think is, it's five o'clock, we're still in the airport, and she already wants a picture. The barrage of granny photos is upon us. At every family dinner or vacation with granny, it is always the same. A constant bombardment of pictures of family members, posed or not, in all of our flattering or not so flattering of moments. One of my personal favorite granny photos is one of my friend helping to wash the dishes after dinner, the look of complete shock and confusion on his face as the camera flashes. No one is safe from the granny photo album, even those outside of the immediate family. And then there's the annual holiday photo. We could be out to a nice dinner when granny would spontaneously call out to the waitress, would you mind taking a picture? Or we could be at a museum when she picks a lucky stranger to do the honor. She always makes sure the photographer takes three photos, no more, no less. And after she decides which photograph she likes the most, she sends it to the entire family with each member neatly labeled the names above their heads. <laughs> Aside from the never-ending pictures, 
there are also the cards Granny sends to us at every holiday. And by holiday, I don't just mean Christmas and Easter cards. She sends back to school cards, the, dra the day our great 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 grandparents came to America cards, Halloween and St. Patrick's Day cards, and paragraphs and pictures of great grandparents who served in the military for Veterans Day. The list goes on and on. When visiting us for two days, she drags in two full suitcases of clothes, along with flashcards, games, and historical documents. <laughs> but even with all of her idiosyncratic behaviors, she has taught me more than I could have ever imagined. An elementary school teacher for over 30 years, whenever she visited when I was younger, she always took the time to help me with my intellectual development and later, my schoolwork. I now understand that all of her eccentric antics to get photographs everywhere we go is so that she can give back all the photos she takes in tidy, handcrafted albums so that we can have a piece of her when she's gone. At 80 years old, she is still a virtuoso on the computer, which helps make her scrapbooks, and can hold a culturally relevant conversation with anyone young or old. She attends every piano recital, jazz concert, and almost every one of my baseball games. For that, I cannot thank her enough, and it makes me appreciate her photos at 5 o'clock in the morning in an airport. Thank you, Henry. I'd like to call up Jenny's son, Nathan. There'll be three major lessons that I'll take from Granny as I go forward in life. The first lesson, come prepared with facts. <laughs> Once when I was traveling with Granny and we got to talking about airports, I made the bold statement, Lima has the best international airport in South America. <laughs> Most grandmas might have responded with, oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Not Granny. She immediately demanded to know the evidence by which this bold claim was made. <laughs> was it on-time arrivals? Was it quality of service? <laughs> Was it cost effectiveness? Mind you, I was 10 at the time. <laughs> my response of, I've heard it from my dad, didn't satisfy Granny's severe level of scrutiny. And she kept on berating me with questions, my head started spinning. By the end of the discussion, I was reduced to, Lima's first class lounge is pretty nice. <laughs> Thanks, Granny. Now I know not to go into an argument unprepared. The second lesson I got from Granny, find what you love and do it to the max. I saw this great in Granny in a couple of ways. One of them was as simple as the food she ate. Anyone who knew Granny knew that she had a love for the children's menu and items generally discouraged by the U.S. Surgeon General. <laughs> Egg salad sandwiches, mac and cheese, pizza, and McDonald's, specifically a filet fish with extra tartar sauce. <laughs> Granny loved mayo, salt, and always seemed to have a bag of potato chips in her purse. She didn't waste time with food she didn't like. In the same way, she found what she loved in life and she pursued it passionately. You could see this in her dancing, which she continued to do since high school, her genealogy, in which she spent countless hours researching our family's history, her swimming, and her passion for history. Over the years, Granny often knew more about the history I was studying than I did. Thanks, Granny. I'll find what I love in life and pursue it with a vengeance. The third lesson, well, it's not really a lesson, but something I'll carry with me, is that Granny was my greatest cheerleader. Granny took an interest in everything that was important to me. Every school year, Granny read some of my assigned books so that she could chat with me about them. I remember long conversations about Shackleton's expedition to Antarctica, the manhunt for Lincoln's killers, and Louis Zamperini's experience in a Japanese POW camp. She also put her heart into learning about my newest sport, rowing. I can still picture her in my regattas with her St. Albans double XL sweatshirts cheering me on from the stands and enthusiastically recounting the race the whole way home. I think Granny's texted me a couple weeks ago on the day before my birthday sums it up. Happy birthday Eve, I've been thinking about you all day, remembering that wonderful day 17 years ago. I've been reading Boys in the Boat and learning about all you have to go through to row. Such punishment, but what a thrilling sport. I love the book. Can't put it down. Your mom told me about your wonderful improvement in your SAT scores, your dance with Charlotte, and your independent driving. Hooray for Nathan. I'll call tomorrow, but this gives me time to tell you how very proud I am of you in every way. Hope your birthday is perfect tomorrow. Love, Granny. Thanks, Granny. And as I go through the major milestones in life and accomplish new goals, be it sports, jobs, or even marriage, and they always be there with me saying hurry for Nathan. Thank you. And now I'd like to call up Claire. I'd like to read the poem. Hi, I'm Claire. Um, I'm going to read a poem, but before I just wanted to say that Granny was proud of all of her grandchildren, um, and she came to, she managed to come to almost all of my dance performances. And it's a lot considering I dance like about 200 times. <laughs> so it was always nice to see her face at the 
back of the audience or to run backstage after a performance and to see who's standing there smiling. And it always just cheered me up, so I thought I'd read this poem. It's called Death, I Death is Nothing at All by Henry Scott Holland. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away into the next room. I am I, and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me in the same easy way which you always did. Put no difference in your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without the shadow of a ghost on it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolutely unbroken continuity. Why should I, should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am just waiting for you, for an interval, somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well. Thank you, Claire. I, I'd like to call Henry back up. Um, one of Granny's favorite things whenever she came over was to get Henry to go over to the piano and play her song. So Henry's going to play her one last song. Thank you all for coming to the service. Um, we're now going to head over to the cemetery, and uh, after a short service there, there will be a luncheon at the um, Villa Amalfi.